Hello everybody, welcome to Shane and Stuff. Today I am going to play through Cartographer's Solo Mode. While I'm not going to do an in-depth how to play, I'll give you a quick overview and you'll basically be able to learn as you watch. So first off, Cartographer's A Role Player Tale is a game in the role player universe. The game Role Player is a card drafting dice game where you try to gain the most reputation constructing the best role play character. The designer of Role Player is credited as a developer of Cartographer's, that is Keith Mateka, and this game, Cartographers, is designed by Jordi Aiden. So Cartographers is put out by Thunderworks Games. It can play one through a hundred players or even more. Basically, as long as people can see the components and have a map sheet, they can play. So you could even go to the Board Game Geek website, print out a map sheet, which I'll link to in the description, and you could play along with me. There are other games in the role player universe, such as Lockup and Role player has a bunch of expansions, so you not only design a character, a fantasy character, but then you can uh, go fight monsters with it. And there's a new role player adventures game coming out, I believe. The Kickstarter is still active, so check that out if you haven't. So, in Cartographers, Queen Gibnex has ordered the reclamation of the Northern Lands. As one of her cartographers, you must find and map her most desired regions, which she will demand through her edicts. The more of the edicts you fulfill, the greater your reputation and chance of becoming the greatest cartographer in the kingdom. So these are your edict cards, A, B, C, and D. You'll set those up in a row on the table. You'll then take your, your season cards, spring, summer, fall, and winter, in that order, and you'll put them up there. So each round is a season. And basically each season has a time threshold. And as you explore cards, or as you flip cards exploring lands, you will draw terrain on the map, and each explore card has a time value. And once you meet or exceed the season's time value, that season's gonna end, you're gonna score that season, and then you're gonna move on to the next round. So you can see in spring, you'll be scoring edicts A and B. So once you get your scorecards out here, under each edict, you'll see what you're going for each round. So in spring you'll score A and B, summer B and C, fall C and D, winter D and A. So each edict will score twice throughout the game. A is going to score both at the beginning and at the end. B is going to score really quickly at the beginning and be done in summer. C is right in the middle and D you can sort of work, to work your map towards to try to get big scores towards the end and of course bringing it back to A. So these are your different kinds of scorecards. So each type of scorecard has four different ways of scoring. And so what you do every game is you're gonna take one randomly from each type of scorecard. And then from those four random selections, you will shuffle those up and place them out randomly under the edit cards. Don't be fooled by these colored wax seals. They actually don't have anything to do with the game. I don't know why, but um, some people think you're supposed to put the green under the green, the blue under the blue, red under red, and this under the purple. But actually there's, there's no functional use of the color of those seals in the game. The, the rules say take four random and then randomly put those out. So let me go ahead and finish that. Okay, so we got the golden granary, the, withhold, the, <laughs> the wild holds, the borderlands, and the tree tower. I'll take a quick look at what each of those does in a minute. So this pile up here with this symbol on the back, this is your explorer deck. Your explorer deck consists of cards with terrain types and shapes, ruins, this rift land which has no time on it and you only draw one square of any type you want, and then every round we're going to insert an ambush card into the deck. So these ambush cards bring out monsters and monsters on your map are negative points. You have to fill in the spaces around the monster spaces or each space that is empty around the monster spaces is a negative point. So you're gonna put one in the deck for the first round and then it may not come out before you meet the season's threshold. If that's the case, it stays in there and you'll add another one. So you can get more than one ambush in a single round, giving you less time to fill in the spaces around them. And so real quick, Basically what you're going to be doing is, you're going to flip a card, you're going to pick a terrain type, and then you're going to pick a shape if there's more than one. If that shape has a coin, you will also mark a coin off on your coin track. Then you draw that shape and terrain on your map. Now, all of these mountain spaces count as filled in. So any scorecards or anything that references filled in, these already count as filled in. When you draw your shape, it must be 
completely within the borders. You cannot make it go off the edge. You cannot cover any previously filled in space, but you can put it anywhere on the map. It's not like one of those games where once you start here, you gotta go out from there. If you surround the four squares adjacent to a mountain, you will also get a coin, and you mark that off on your coin track. These ruins spaces you can draw over at any time, but the way the ruins cards work is if you flip a ruins card, or there's two, so if you flip both of them, you just still play it the same way. The next card that is a regular terrain card that flips after that, you must draw that shape over a ruin space. If you cannot fit the shape over a ruin space or there are no ruin spaces left, then you can draw a single square of any terrain type anywhere on the map. And if it's just a regular card and you've run out of space to, that fits the shape and you can't draw it anywhere, then you must draw a single square anywhere on the map that matches one of the terrain types on the card. So, you're gonna shuffle up your explore deck. You're gonna take one of the ambush cards randomly and then keep this face down so you don't know what's in the deck. I'm gonna slot that in, shuffle again, and then put your explore deck over here. Okay, so you'll notice I've got colored pencils out here and a regular pencil. So the game comes with four regular pencils. So if you're gonna use one of those, your map is gonna look something like this at the end. So you will draw the shape and then you will fill in the terrain with the same sort of fill in they've got here. The villages have like sort of a house-ish shape. Looks like an arrow, but it's probably supposed to be a house. The waters have the squigglies, the farms have the slashes, the forests have the little, little trees. You know, so, but uh, I found this, you know, I mean, it works, it's fine. It's not that hard to tell what you've drawn, but it's definitely easier at a glance to use color. <laughs> so you can use color and you can draw the shapes if you want, or just fill it in like this, like I did. It just makes it much easier to see what you've drawn. And I've seen people use markers and then fill in the shapes with those. It looks really great, but I wouldn't want to make a mistake. So I don't know, maybe they're doing it in pencil first and then coloring it over with marker just because they like how it looks. I mean, hey, this is a mapping game, a pen slash pencil and paper game. So, you know, hey, you can, you can have fun and make it as pretty as you want. So if you do use color, you're gonna need green, purple, blue, yellow, and red. So one final quick note on round scoring. So the score sheet has, this, has these great score grids down here. So you'll see in spring, it's telling you score edict A and write that number here. Score edict B, write that number there count up the number of coins you've marked off, and you'll mark that here. And then however many empty spaces there are adjacent to monster spaces, put that here, and that's gonna be negative, and then you get your total. And then you're gonna do that every round, and then mark your final total here. Now, in a solo game, you're gonna get your total, but then you're going to look at each scorecard and take this number out of the star here. You can see it says one player right there. You're gonna to total all four of those up and subtract that from your score. Then you're gonna look the back of the manual and see what title you've been given. So in a multiplayer game, you can put down your name, you can make up a title and then make a family crest and kind of do this up as you like. You can see one I did here, you know, Zelda of the Legendary Clan, and I got Journeyman cartographer at the end of the game. So you can see, to become a legendary cartographer, you need 30 plus points after you've subtracted, and these numbers are in the 20s. Uh, you know, this one's 24, this one's 20, this one's 16, this one's 17. So somewhere around 80 points, so you've got to score, you know, over 100 points just to get the legendary cartographer title. Now, one final thing on ambushes. I'm gonna have to redo my ambush things, I forgot. So, ah, the first card was gonna be an ambush. How lucky. Okay, so when an ambush card comes up, it'll show you a shape, and then uh, in a multiplayer game, you would look at the arrows, and you would hand your sheet to the person in that direction from you. They would draw the monster shape anywhere they want on your map. And of course, that's going to, they could cover up ruin spaces, they could block something you were trying to do, making a group. Uh, and of course there are negative points if you don't surround them. So in a solo game what you do is you first look at this little grid and which of these squares is purple. So you're gonna look to that corner of the map and then go in the direction of the arrows until you can draw this shape. So you start here. Can you draw that shape here? If you can, draw it. Otherwise move all the way around the edge. If you couldn't draw it go going there you move one space in and go around. 
And if you can't draw this shape anywhere, then you get to just ignore it. In a multiplayer game, if the person can't draw the shape on your sheet, then they can draw a single monster square anywhere on your map. Let's reset that real quick. And then we'll go over the scorecards and then we're ready to play. Okay, so the scorecards are the Golden Granary. To earn one reputation star for each water space adjacent to a ruin space. Earn three reputation stars for each farm space on a ruin space. So basically, you wanna build farms on top of ruin spaces for three points each time you do that. And you wanna build the water around the ruin spaces for one point per water space next to a ruined space. So the Wild Holds card, earn eight reputation stars for each cluster of six or more village spaces. So a cluster is basically any grouping of the same terrain that shares adjacent sides, orthogonal sides, not diagonal. And it can be a straight line, a different shape. It does not have to be this shape. A cluster is simply adjacent terrain of the same type. Borderlands, earn six reputation stars for each complete row or complete column of filled spaces. I found for me, this has been somewhat tough to do when I've had this because you have to fill in a complete row or complete column, but it's six points each. So that can rack up pretty quickly if you can do, if you can do a bunch of them. Finally, the tree tower. Earn one reputation star for each forest space surrounded on all four sides by filled spaces or the edge of the map. So I guess these gray spaces are denoting filled spaces. So this is surrounded by fill, 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 fill. This is surrounded by fill, fill, fill and edge. This one is not fully surrounded, therefore it does not get a point. So these are what to keep in mind as you're going through each season and making your decisions and filling in your map. That's it for how to play, so let's play. So I just uh, filled in my score sheet with my cartographer name. I am Magellan of House Historia, and of course my family crest is this just amazingly accurate, wonderfully and wonderful and beautiful map here. So let's play. First, explore card is a ruins. So we draw again. Now we have an orchard. So I need to draw this shape in either forest or farm, keeping in mind the edict card. So this round, I'm going to be scoring farms. So if they're on ruins, I get three points each. So if I can fill in a couple ruins this round, I'll get, I'll get points this round and points at the end of the game. But I don't want to fill in too many of the ruin spaces because when other Ruins cards comes up, I need Ruin spaces to draw over or else I only get to fill in a single space. Luckily, it just so happens that this is a Ruins turn, so I'm gonna draw a farm over a Ruin space. Let me figure that out. All right, so I went ahead and filled it in down here. By the way, you can flip or rotate these shapes any direction, so it doesn't have to be the way it appears on the card. Only in the solo mode when you're doing the ambush, you draw it as it's shown, but any other part of the game, solo or multiplayer, you can flip and rotate that shape anyway. So I wrote, I flipped it, I'm putting it here over this ruin space, which is gonna score me three points at the end of this round, as well as in the, the final round. I put it over here because I feel like there's the mountains and things a little bit filled in already. So I'm gonna sort of try to go for filling in these columns maybe. And then I've got some space next to the edges for forests where I can surround those more easily and get points for those. And just try to hit everything up. So, and that is the first turn. We're at two time out of eight. So we flip another explore card. We have a farmland. So now I have to draw farm. I could get a coin, which will pay off well because a coin now will actually give me a point, will give me a total of four points once per round. So I might do that and probably try to cover a ruins to get three points. So let's see what I do. Okay, so I went ahead and put that, put this here. Now I thought about using the uh, cross shape and putting that here so that I could surround this mountain and get a coin for that. But then I wouldn't get the three points for covering our ruins. And if I use this shape to cover our ruins, I still get the coin. So I decided to put this here. And also, this also keeps things down here. So I can also possibly try to fill in these rows for that Borderlands bonus. Okay, next card. We're at three of eight. We're now at four of eight. So now we have the Forgotten Forest. So I can get another coin. I can also try to build this shape where things are surrounded. Thinking about that tree tower score. Let's see what I do. Okay, so I went ahead and used this shape here because that gets me one coin from the Explore card and fills in the, surrounds this mountain space for another coin. So now I already have three coins in the first round. 
and I can fill in these spaces around the forests, I have three rounds to do that. Or I guess two rounds, because in the third round, I will score D, C and D, but then the fourth round, I will score D again. So gotta work towards that. So we are at five of eight now. We are now at seven of eight, so we're gonna get at least one more scorecard. So we have a homestead, so I can either make village, so I'm also gonna be scoring villages. There's probably, unless the next one comes out is a village, I don't know if I can score the wild holds, but you know what, I should probably try because I don't wanna cover up any more ruined space right now. I'm already getting six points from that, and I wanna make sure I've got some ruined spaces open for later. Let's fill in a homestead because the wild holds, that's, that can be eight points. Maybe I'll get lucky. Let's see where I put it. All right. I decided to put that down here because it uh, fills in a couple empty spaces around the forest which leads towards that tree tower score and then I've also got room to grow the village this way so I can make sure I get hopefully a cluster of six so we'll see what happens marshlands all right this is gonna end the round so I'm not gonna get that wild holds score but I could surround a ruined space with some water and get some points this round or look towards the tree tower score, drawing some trees. Let's see what I do. Okay, so here's what I did. I decided to go with trees over here. Now I could have done that with water and gotten two points right now, and then two points at the end of the game. But if I can fill in all these spaces by the time I score D twice at the last two rounds, this is a potential one, two, three, four, five points twice, so 10 points. So it's worth a lot more points if I can score with the trees. Also, it continues to fill in these rows for the Borderlands scoring, and also fills in a space next to a mountain, which can lead to a coin. So that's what I did. Let's now score the round. So again, so I look at Edict A, score that, B, score that, count up my coins, count up any monster spaces which don't exist. I did not get a ambush. And let's see what my total is. Okay, so Edict A scored me six, three points for each ruins covered by a farm. I got zero for Edict B, which is I needed a cluster of six village, which I didn't get. So hopefully I can get at least one of those next round. Getting wild holds kind of so early, it's kind of hard to score because you got to get a lot of village. But no monster spaces, so I scored nine. Now, typically the first round score is pretty low. In one of my games, I only scored a three. Um, 13 and 18 on another one, but uh, nine, not, not too shabby for the first round. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is if we had any ambush cards, we, we would remove it from the pile, and we're gonna take all the explorer cards and add a new ambush card. We're gonna shuffle, all, shuffle that up, and we're gonna remove the spring card and go to, go to fall or summer. I know how seasons work. And so in summer, we're going to be scoring B and C. Okay, we are all shuffled up and ready to go. First card, a farmland. So again, we're going to be scoring the Golden Granary at the very last round of the game. So let's see if I can, should fill in a ruined space maybe to get three points then, as well as another coin if I do that right. Let's see what I do. Okay, so... I went ahead and filled this in. So that'll be another three points at the end of the game. It also fills in a couple spaces around the trees, uh, which is gonna lead to points, and also keeps filling in this row and gives me another coin, which is gonna be points right away. All right, so we are at one time out of eight, and we have a goblin attack. So once again, we go ahead and look at this grid. We start in that corner. We're gonna move this way with the arrows until we can draw that shape. So starting in this corner, we can draw it here. So that's what we'll do. All right, that's done. So now I got these monster spaces. And uh, so any space that is not filled in next to a monster space is a negative point. So I gotta get those filled in now. This just gets discarded. Next explore card. All right, the Great River. So I can potentially get another coin, which might be good, I've already got four. So if I get a fifth now and stop there, that's going to be 15 total points before the end of the game. So I think I'm doing good with coins and I should maybe keep that up. Also want to keep in mind the Golden Granary, which will get me points for river spaces surrounding ruins, but only one point per space. So I think I, my coin will be a lot more lucrative. Let's see what I do. Okay, so 
I went ahead and put the water here. So this is going to get me one point at the end of the game for being next to a ruins. It also surrounds this mountain, getting that closer to a coin. Also fills in almost this entire column, which is going to score this round with the Borderlands. This round we score B and C. And another coin. So now I'm at five coins. So and if I can fill in this, if I can end up some, no, this would, I don't know if it's even possible. If I were to somehow fill in this, all this, this round, it would score huge. Here we go. We have the Hinterland Stream. That I think is going to work pretty well. Let me look at how I'm gonna do that. I went ahead and put that one over here. So I've now filled in this entire row, which is going to score me six points for Borderlands. I also am going to get a point at the end of the game for having that space next to Ruins. Now I only have a single space here, but I can fill that in with a Riftlands or if something else comes up that I can't draw. I also have <laughs> two single spaces. We'll see how that works out, but I can at least get a second row, hopefully before I have to score, and hopefully this round, so I can also score it again next round and try to work on this other row. Or I can go for this row. Whatever. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> Homestead. All right, so we still have the wild holds scoring this round. So I'm probably gonna use this to get those points. Let's see how I put that. I went ahead and put that right here so that I could keep this a single cluster and get uh, eight points from the Wildlands this round. That's the last time I'm gonna score that. There's probably no way to get another six space village cluster. So just gonna milk that right now. I'll also put it here to maximize filling in this row, as well as get it next to a mountain, which I could end up surrounding later for another coin. All right, so we are now at six out of eight time. So let's see what's next. Uh-oh, another monster ambush. And I kind of already forgot about this, so hopefully I get enough points elsewhere to counteract this and now this. So this is bad. Okay, so starting at the bottom left corner, moving clockwise, I have to draw that shape, which is going to go smack dab right there, which actually, in a funny way, helps me fill in a row. And also is already surrounded a couple spots, so it's already less negative points. So that's not the worst thing that can happen. So let's fill that in. There we are. That's gonna go discarded. Another explore card. Aha, Riftlands. This is my friend. I wanted this right now because now I can fill in this row and I'm gonna score, oh my gosh, I am almost scoring three rows. That would be 18 points if I can fill this in. Oh my gosh, I have a potential two more cards still. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here's what I did. I filled in a forest space right here. Now I could have filled it water, which at the end of the final round would have given me one point. And it also makes this forest worth one point. However, the tree tower card is still going to score twice. So a f completely surrounded tree right here actually is gonna be worth a total of two points. So it was better to put a forest there, and get me an extra point. But I just filled in this row, which is gonna give me six points from the borderlands and actually you know, a total of 12 points because it's going to score again the next round. This is working out mighty fine. All right, here we go. Marshlands, this is going to be the final card of this round because now I am at two, four, six, eight of eight time. Okay, so I don't think the water is that lucrative anymore and the ruined spaces are way up here now. I am going to fill in forests somewhere where I hopefully can get a lot of use out of it. Let's see, but I won't be able to put it there and fill in that row, unfortunately but I could potentially put it here, which decreases some monster points and also automatically surrounds a couple of the forest spaces, or at least they are almost surrounded. But let me take a look and think of, decide what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I did in fact decide to put it here. Um, there were other considerations somewhere over here uh, surrounding the mountain, but I wanted to get rid of these negative spaces. So I, I almost put it here to reduce those negative spaces as well as not have this very specific size uh, space right here to fill in, hopefully before the end of the next round to score the Borderlands one more time. But I figured I'd take the risk and also this is potential more tree points because these tree spaces are almost already filled in. So we'll just see what happens. I hope I get lucky and get to score those. 
Okay, so that is the end of the round. So we're gonna score Wildlands and Borderlands, count up my coins, count up my negative monster spaces and see what happens. So Wildlands, I have one cluster of six or more village, that's gonna be eight points. Borderlands, I have two complete rows, that's gonna be 12 points. I have five coins, that's gonna be five points. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, empty monster spaces, that's seven negative points. So let's see what happens. So my total ends up being 18, which is double what I scored in the first round. So not too bad, seven. It would have been 25 points before that seven, but hopefully next round I can get those filled in, but I'm trying to do a lot of things. I wanna, if I can fill in both these rows or even this row, actually, ooh, if I could fill in this row and this row, that's gonna be another 12 points next round plus negating some of these monster points. Ooh, this could be good. All right, so again, we reset the round. So I've already removed the ambush cards. I put everything back in the deck, add another ambush card. So I got both ambush cards that were in there last round. So next round, hopefully I only have a potential one. Hopefully I get none because I don't want any more negative points. Okay, I shuffled those really good. We'll see how good in a second. So we are now in fall. We're going to be scoring C and D, Borderlands and Tree Towers. So I need to fill in tree surrounding spaces and get these two other rows. Bam, a Hamlet. All right, see, I can't, villages don't score me any more points. So I got to figure out how to make this score me other points. There's a coin I can get. Let's see what I can do here. I'm not sure if this is the best decision in the world, but I felt like I couldn't pass up filling in so much of these two rows, as well as covering up two of the negative monster spaces. I was thinking of putting that over here, which actually, you know, <laughs> now that I think about it, it's gonna negate two of these negative points. And also I would have gotten a coin, which is two points by the end of the game. But if I can fill these two rows in, I'm still gonna get rid of those negative points. And that's a potential 12 points. So I think that might've been the way to go. And I might still even get lucky and fill this in. However, we're only dealing with seven time now in fall. So the time threshold goes down, but who knows? This is gonna be really epic or an epic disaster. Next card. Ruins, uh-oh. That means I'm gonna have to put this somewhere way out of the rows I'm trying to fill in. Ay ay ay. not good. Oh, okay, a rift lens. Interesting. I will probably just throw that on top of, make a farm on top of a ruined space because I have to put it on a ruined space and that's gonna be three points in the final round. So not the worst thing that could happen again. Okay, so I went ahead and put that up here, which is gonna be three points in the final round. Uh, it's also close-ish to this stuff. I don't know if I'm gonna end up filling in a, a column, but I have to do that by the end of this round, so probably not. I mean, I could have put it up here and been closer to this area, but I don't know if it matters so much. I'm trying to fill in this stuff down here at least until the end of this round when I, after I score Borderlands. All right, so that is zero time, so we're at one time. And again, remember, I had to draw that over a ruined space, so I used farm to score three points in the final round. Treetop, village, trees and village. I don't need village anymore, so it's definitely gonna be trees. Looks like I might be able to use that to get close to completing a row. This is good, this is good, this is good. All right, let me see where I put it. Yeah, so, okay, <laughs> this works out really good, okay, because these are already worth, well, this and this are worth two points, plus getting rid of negative points. So in a sense, four points. This is almost covered. Um, and basically I connected up here. So, oh, uh, I still have empty spaces down here. Never mind. I was thinking I could almost get an, uh, an actual column, but I don't think that's going to happen. But I also filled in more of these two rows. So if I could just get this and this filled, that's, a, that's 12 more points this round that I'm going to score. Not looking too bad. He says before everything fell apart. Okay, next card. I have four time left. Marshlands, another big tree area and that. Oh, that's gonna be good. Oh, that's gonna, oh yeah. This is getting me a coin points, filling in a row and then leaving only one more space for another row. Oh my goodness. Let me see, let me make sure. Uh, yeah, I was mistaken about the coin because I still have an empty space around this mountain here, but two points for each of these four spaces being already surrounded, filling in a row for six points, 
and I just need to fill this space to complete that row. Now, it's kind of a, depending on what comes up, it could be hard to slot something in there. But I also, if a triple comes up, I can fill in this and negate a negative point. I still have two time, so who knows what could happen. The next card could end the round, or it could be a one, and I could get two more cards out of it. Can you feel the excitement? And it's probably gonna be an ambush. <laughs> uh, I called it. Okay, null raid starts in the upper left, goes that way, but it's gonna fit in the upper left, I think. Yep, and that's gonna be a lot of negative points. Ooh, this game is rough sometimes. It's a nice, pleasant sort of rough, though. Alrighty, there they are. At least it's on the edge, so these could have been all negative spaces. And of course, if we were playing multiplayer, somebody would have thrown that right here for all sorts of negative points, but one, two, three, four, five. It's already rough in a solo game because you can subtract all of those points. So I think they give you a little bit of leeway there and they probably, you know, constructed this whole ranking system based on all of that. So, wow, well, how many was that? One, two, three, four, five negative points added. But I still have two time. See what, what happens. Ah, this is gonna end the round. Farmer Village. And I cannot use that to fill in that row. And Borderlands will not score again. So a potential six more points is lost. What can I do to best use this shape? Let me see. Okay, so what I actually did was put it over here. So, cause remember the golden granary is only gonna score in the last round. Not this round, but these negative points are going to count now and the next round. So I, I filled in three spaces of negative points to negate six negative points. I think that was better than just covering this for a potential three points. No, well, not a potentially an assured three points, but that's only three points. This is basically amounts to six points. So I still got, in a way, the amount of points that filling in this row would have. Yay! <laughs> that ends the round already discarded the ambush cards so we're gonna pack up these back into the deck grab the final ambush card shuffle it up and we're ready to go for the final round all right who's ready who's ready for the final round here we go hinterland stream okay so i could get another three points by covering it ruins, but I'm also trying to fill in spaces around trees. I forgot to score last round. I got so caught up into resetting the round. Here, let me score real quick. Okay, so uh, for my Borderlands, I scored 18 points, which was my total in the last round. Because one, two, three rows filled in, no columns. Uh, the tree tower, I have nine tree spaces completely surrounded here and here, 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 here. And then I have five coins still from last round. That's that's now, you know, so that five coins pays off because it's now scored me a total of 10 points. And then only four monster spaces. One, two, three, four. So not too bad. 28 points in round three in fall. But we are now in winter. Winter, winter. So here we go. Hinterland stream. Let's see what I do with that. So what I did was I put water here because if it's not on top of or next to a ruins, water or farm, doesn't matter. Thought I'd mix it up and put some water. Putting this here gets me a coin, which I haven't marked. <laughs> I'm trying to do that looking at the camera and not at the sheet. Um, so it gets me a coin. Also turns this and this into a point, as well as this and this in, into a point. It's basically five points. Placement, if I had just put a, if I just surrounded a ruins with it, it would have been two points. And if I had used farm over the ruins, it would have been three points. But if I get a ruins card, I want to have ruins available anyway. So I thought that five points was well used there. Next card, we are at two of six time. Winter only has six time. What did we get? Fishing village. Oh, too bad I didn't have that a long time ago. Could have filled in that row, but let's see what I can do with this. I think I can see already I could possibly get, uh, negate some monster points. And let me see what else. Let me take a look. After some deliberation, I decided to put that here because this negates two negative points, gets me one positive point, 
and helps to try to cover this tree maybe for another point. Um, doesn't do much else. I thought about putting it here because it gets me a, still a point here. It makes this worth a point. And then it makes these two only need this space filled in. So if I were to get that shape that slots in right there, I could turn these two and that into a point and everything. But I'm already at four of six time. So I have no idea. The next card comes up could be a two and I'm done. And I don't remember. Uh, that's probably a two if it were to come up. But also any points that I just score over here, these negative points are still going to count against me. So this is in a way, uh, one, two, three point, but also anything over here I would subtract two from because I wouldn't have negated those points. I don't know, math, maybe somebody's like, no, 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 that's not how it works. This this would have been better. <laughs> Tell me in the comments. Uh, and, uh, and again, you could be playing this with me. If you haven't, print out the sheet, start over, play the same game I played, and show me how you smash my score. All right, next explore card. Boom. Ah, okay. So this is going to have to be ruins. So I'm going to have to put whatever shape here. <laughs> Another ruins. That just means it's still ruins. It doesn't double up anything or do anything like that. The orchard. Okay. Hey, how fortuitous is that? It's a farm. So when I cover the ruins, it's going to get me three points. This is going to end the game though. So let me see if there's any best way to place this over that ruins. So unless I missed something, there's no way to score any more points having to draw over the ruin space. Uh, and if I used, even if I used uh, forests, none of them would be worth any points. So I'm going to get three points for that. And that's going to end the game. And look, I've reached up to my, my crest, you know, but still there's a space down here. It's not a complete column. That's just messy, sloppy. All right. So here we go. I'm going to score up the total for this round and then subtract the stars and see what my final score is. Okay, so the verdict is in and I have marked my pad as I did the scoring so I can easily show you uh, how I got the score. So uh, Edict uh, D, which is the tree tower, so every completely surrounded tree space. So I had one, two, three four, five, you can see empty space, empty space next to these. So those are, don't point, don't score. Six, seven, it has an empty space, empty spaces. Eight, empty spaces, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, empty space. So 13 points for Edict D. Now, the golden granary. So I had three points for each ruins covered by my farm. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, and then one point for each water next to a ruin 16 17 18 for 18 points i had six coins and only two negative monster spaces one two oh sorry three okay uh messed that up so there's actually three <laughs> so my score is actually 30 four for a total of 89 i got they got messy here so uh, only 34 points in the final round for 89 total. So 34, 28, 18, 9, 89, minus 77, which is the total of all of, of the star values on the scorecards. So I subtract that from 89 to get my solo score of 12, which earns me journeyman topographer. I have topographied haha, this land in the name of the queen, and she has named me journeyman Magellan. So you can see because I got 12 points, I am above journeyman topographer, eight short of master and uh, 18 short of legendary. So I have not achieved legendary yet. I think my highest score so far was like 26, I think if I'm reading this right. Anyway, that is Cartographers. Once again, you can follow the link to BGG or find another way to get a uh, one of these sheets to print out yourself. You can learn from this video, play the same game I did and compare your score. I would love to see how you do and probably can't do it on YouTube, but if you go to my Facebook page, you can uh, take a picture of your sheet and tell me how you did. So that is Cartographers. I hope you all enjoyed it. I think it's a wonderful game. You can also play it for free on Tabletopia. I might make a video on how to use the interface on there because it takes a, a little bit to figure out exactly how to use it. And also when they do the setup, they actually put 
they, they, they take a random one from each type of scorecard, but they lay it out green, blue, red, or whatever. So you actually have to grab those cards and shuffle those and then redistribute them to make it random. Anyway, that's Cartographers. If you saw me make any mistakes or think I could have made better decisions, let me know in the comments. Give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, game on, end of line.